Hi, my name is Joan Hughes and this presentation is the learning that has taken place in the Learning Theories module for completion of a Master's in Applied E-Learning. The title of my presentation is Exploring Relevant Learning Theories to Assist Young Adult Students to Become More Active in Their Own Learning in Further Education and Training. I work as an instructor in LCTA which was established in 1982 with the purpose of upskilling early school leavers between the ages of 16 to 21 to assist with combating educational disadvantage within the Liberties area. A recent study carried out by UCD students found that the southwest inner city has the highest school dropout rate of less than 16 years within Dublin city and LCTA are assisting with combating educational disadvantage with progression into further education and employment accounting for 84% of past students. As can be seen in the Liberties area, young adults who don't engage in some form of education are at risk of poverty, becoming involved in antisocial behaviour, being long-term unemployed or socially excluded. A paper that was written by Social Justice Ireland makes the point, early school leaving not only presents problems for the young people, it also has economic and social consequences for society. Education is the most efficient way of safeguarding against unemployment. The risk of unemployment increases considerably the lower the level of education. Therefore, access to educational opportunity and meaningful participation in the system, together with access to successful outcomes, is central to the democratic delivery of education. In my own practice, I've found many issues that exist, such as lack of concentration, restlessness, lack of interest, motivation, reflection, passive learning, and all of these can be classified under learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is a learned behavior, a conditioned response. This theory was originally discovered by psychologist Seligman and Mayer in 1967. From an educational perspective, it can be defined as children with learned helplessness have cognitive, motivational and emotional deficits because they have experienced so much failure or what they think to be failures in their young lives that they don't try. A lot of young adults that enter a training centre believe that because they have failed in school, they are incapable of achieving in the future. The act of giving up trying as the result of constant failure and this perception of their own ability has the most influence on the young adult student's effort. They give up trying before they even begin. This results in low self-esteem, a lack of confidence in their own ability to perform and in some cases the students display a lot of anger due to frustration within the educational system due to learned helplessness. With this knowledge, facilitators must look at theories and align this with their teaching practice. Learning theories are important in education as it gives the facilitator effective ways to meet the needs of the student in learning a topic. Therefore, the key role of a facilitator of student learning is dependent then upon the theory of learning that you hold. Behaviourism. A lot of young adults enter adult educational settings with preconceived ideas of how learning should take place, expecting the instructor to impart the information. This lies with the behaviourist learning theory, but where it is teacher-centred rather than student-centred. So why do students want this mode of educational delivery? It's simply because they may not have experienced any form of positive educational experience and are more comfortable to sit back and let the teacher dominate the classroom rather than become involved out of fear of being humiliated. When people's experience of school education has been disappointing and even more so, where education has involved the ritual humiliation so common, we take on the facade of a child back in the classroom Rogers 2004. This has made the student lethargic in their own learning as they don't see a need to take responsibility for their learning. Behaviourism rewards surface learning, a response to a stimuli, but to incorporate information processing I've also started using cognitivism as it is concerned with how our memory deals with new information from input and storage to recall. As stated in the paper, teaching and learning in further and higher education. When new information can be stored in an organised, meaningful manner, learning has resulted. As stated by Brunner, we learn best not by committing a body of knowledge to mind, 
but by participating in the process that makes it possible the establishment of that knowledge. Knowledge is a process, not a product. From a cognitive perspective, the learner is viewed as an active participant in the knowledge acquisition process. Therefore, instructional material that utilise demonstration, illustrative examples and corrective feedback are helpful in providing mental models that the learner can follow. Mackinay, 2007. Jerome Brunner's developmental theories that learners should be provided with study materials, activities and tools that are matched to and capitalise on developing cognitive, uh, cognitive abilities is very important. In 1996, he states that the theory of instruction should hold four main aspects. The predisposition to learn, structure of learning, effective sequencing and reinforcement. Garnier's nine levels. As learned from this model, in order to learn understanding is necessary. This is important when educating young adults, learners. <clears throat> from this model, we can clearly see how this process works each step of the way from gaining attention to enhancing retention and transfer. Active enga actively engaging students in their learning gives heightened learning experience and makes classes much more enjoyable for both the students and the instructor. In recent weeks, I've started to develop many different strategies. Some of the activities that I've developed, a one minute paper, group activities, crosswords, reflective journals, I've also developed some screencastings for the use by students in the use of Microsoft Word. These screencastings can be found on the artifacts page of my ePortfolio. In conclusion, by aligning theories to practice and changing the teaching strategies that I use, I have seen firsthand the benefits to the students as they have become more engaged in the learning process, enjoy the classes more and are learning far more from these new techniques. Learning theories have provided me with new insight into a teaching practice and the ways that I can and have improved my facilitation skills to encourage active learning with young adults in further education and training. With the use of both behaviourism and cognitivism teaching strategies, the students that I teach are now more actively engaged in the learning process and are better prepared to be able to retrieve and use the knowledge that they have learned in the future when required. Thank you.